Hey, thanks everybody. Catherine Curry. Oh my gosh, it's been a while. Uh, and even my uh, my wife has decided to join. Hey, Barbara, you can come out and check it out. Oh, this guy has a real problem. Uh, those of you getting to know, um, uh, I've been I've been meaning to give this guy a name. Anybody want to? Um, I've only had him for a dozen years, and I've never I've never named him. Um, I'm always turning his head around and getting his head on straight. Um, he's uh, lost a lot of body parts. Um, he's lost both arms. He's lost one leg. He's lost a tibia. Uh, he's got some real challenges. Uh, so uh, there we go. So welcome everybody. Um, thanks so much for uh, joining my uh, skeleton friend and I here. I came out of the closet today. Um, my name is Curtis Cramblett. I'm a licensed physical therapist and I've been doing this now for over 25 years and I've had the privilege of working with um, the stay-at-home mom and dad as well as the, um, the elite level athlete, uh, whether it be an elite level cyclist, a runner, or a golf player. And uh, I just love um, helping people get better. That's really our passion is to help people accomplish their goals. Um, and Viata, I'm gonna have you turn your volume down a little bit. I've got Viata in my ear if you're wondering what that's about because I'm getting myself on the, the reverb. Thank you, oh, that's okay, yeah. So um, so I've been doing this for a couple of years now and uh, I'm just trying to figure out and enjoying figuring out how to provide value is uh, we're all sheltering in place. Uh, how can um, Revolutions in Fitness continue to help you uh, uh, while you're out there taking care of yourself as well? And one of the uh, questions I got last week was, hey, a lot of people are wondering how to get their glutes engaged. Uh, so we're always looking for recommendations on what kind of subjects that you'd like. So this week's about how to get your glutes engaged. Um, and I'm a big note cards guy because I'll forget just about everything. So you'll see me uh, work through my note cards. So um, why do our butts shut off? Why do our deep uh, hip muscles shut off? And uh, what can we do about it? Because these muscles are, are just so critical uh, because they're the power muscles of our back. Um, they're muscles that fascia go up into our low back and then of course down into our leg. And um, they're gonna help not only the stay at home parent but also the competitive athlete to be healthy in their low back, uh, to be healthy in their knee, in their hip, and even be healthy all the way down to the foot. Because if the butt muscles aren't working well, and we'll talk about the layers of butt muscles, if they're not working well, then what happens is um, we don't have good support for our knee or stability for our knee, and we don't have good support and stability up into our low back. So I'm wondering, and I'm, I like to, if anyone finds this um, true for them, give me a thumbs up. Uh, have you ever had your glutes not working well? Have you ever been like I've been where, boy, I'm out on the bike or I'm out on the run uh, or out on a hike and I feel my quads working like mad? Um, but I don't feel my hamstrings or my glutes kicking in or I get back in the next day and I'm just going man my, my legs are so sore and when I move my legs I feel my quads and I just don't feel like my my butt has done any of the work So if that's true for you, um, click down below and just let me know whether that's true for you So today as I mentioned um, uh, And there's people joining in so I'm just gonna do a quick reintro Curtis Cramblett physical therapist today We're talking about gluteal amnesia syndrome why it happens and what you can do about it. So um, today we're gonna to talk about um, what, first why it happens. Uh, the glute muscles, as probably most of you know, uh, are muscles that come from the back of the pelvis here. Uh, there's a couple of them. There's a big superficial one that provides a lot of power. Um, that's the glute max, then there's a the glute med, and then the glute min. Those muscles are responsible for, of course, extending or kicking the leg behind you. Uh, they're responsible for turning the leg out uh, and they're responsible for lifting the leg to the outside. Now that's all when your leg is floating. What they're mostly responsible for is when the foot hits the ground to make sure they control the rotation, control that leg twisting in when you're running and make sure that the knee doesn't slap the top tube as you push down on the bike to make sure that there's not a lot of torque as it comes up into your back as your leg exerts force on the ground. Um, so the glutes are these muscles back in the, the back here that are really responsible for a lot of our power when we push our legs behind us or when we push down, uh, whether we're coming up from a squat and lifting a heavy laundry basket or lifting kids, uh, or uh, whether we're running up a hill or jumping. So that's the basic anatomy of our glutes. Uh, what a lot of us don't realize is that strength not only comes from hypertrophy, muscles getting uh, bigger, if you will, uh, but strength, what our grandmas didn't teach us, so to speak, but strength comes a lot from alignment. And what do I mean by that? 
Uh, what I mean is that when the posture of the pelvis and the hip or the posture of the torso uh, or even the posture and the position that your femur, this bone here is in your pelvis, when that posture is not in an efficient alignment, when this bone gets twisted in or when this bone gets pulled forward or when your pelvis gets rotated forward, when there's not an efficient alignment of this ball and socket joint, when the ball is not in line with the torso or in line with the pelvis, then that's the first thing that inhibits strength. I like to say it's kind of like pushing down on a tack. If you put your foot on top of a tack and you go to push down, you're not gonna have a lot of strength, like right? Well, if your body senses that your femur position and your hip joint position is not in an efficient place, in a healthy place, it's not gonna be willing to produce a lot of force. In other words, the glutes are inhibited. They're shut off, they're turned off, they're asleep, or the brain for some reason has decided not to activate those muscles. When I think about muscles and I think about muscles working, I like to call this a muscular orchestra. And up here is the conductor of that orchestra. And many times that conductor who's responsible for controlling those muscles say, no, 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 I'm not gonna let you do that. I know you want to do that, but our bodies are very smart and that there's poor alignment. A lot of you might have experienced this around the shoulder. And then when your shoulder is in, everyone do this for me. I'm going to have you roll your shoulder forward, kind of slump for me, and then lift up your arm and feel how strong or weak you feel up there. Feel how easy it is to reach for the ceiling. And now we're going to get a better posture and a better alignment. Sit up a little bit taller, allow your chest to open up a little bit, and then lift up. And see how light your arm feels up here. See how willing your body is to move your arm and see how strong it feels up there. And then go back down and then try it again. When you have good alignment of your hip, your pelvis, your low back, your hip muscles, your glutes are willing to engage. Otherwise, they are inhibited by something. Sometimes it's pain, sometimes it's alignment. So what your grandma didn't teach you about strength is inhibition and waking the muscles up, uh, getting the brain to be able to do what you want it to do is really critical. So if this is the muscular orchestra and this is the conductor, the second thing your grandma didn't teach you about muscles not working uh, is that sometimes muscles get amnesia. And so the brain has a map of all of these muscles. And if you don't use it, you start to lose it. The conductor forgets how to engage one part of the glute. The conductor forgets that it should engage one part before another. The, the conductor decides, the brain decides that the grooves for that habit of movement are, are I'm gonna use my quads instead of my glutes. So what happens is we get in these movement how we need to give the brain a reminder and give the body a reminder so the conductor can start to sense into the glute and the glute can start to tell the brain what's going on so the conductor can start to wake up and play the right music that you want it to play. So that's our second goal today is to give you a couple of exercises uh, to be able to get the conductor to tell the glute to wake back up. Essentially give the glute an offer it can't refuse because you've gotten in such movement patterns for whatever reason, whether they be tightness or weakness or just habit, you've gotten in a movement pattern that your body has forgotten how to engage the muscles or the body isn't willing to engage the right muscles. So again, my name is Curtis Cramblett. Um, Revolutions in Fitness, and we'll be posting this video on YouTube. If you um, if you have any friends who are excited about gluteal activation or uh, just care about waking up their butt, you can check this out on YouTube. And of course, we're always available if you just have any questions. We'd love to get on the phone with you and just see whether we can give you an exercise or just help problem solve on what's going on. If you're appreciating why the glutes turn off, uh, give me a thumbs up or click the wow. That just helps people know out there that we're doing this. So with that being said, let's talk about exercises. So when you think about exercises to help get things firing better, uh, the first thing I said is if there's a malposition, if there's a poor posture or alignment of the hip, the body's not gonna be willing to engage those right muscles in the right way. So I, I lovingly call this tight ass syndrome, excuse everybody for the ALS number word, the tight butt syndrome, I should do that, T-A-S. So when you have tightness in our deep hip rotators or our labrum, our hip capsule, when these muscles are tight, they frequently pull this bone in the wrong position uh, and then that alignment of the joint makes it so these muscles can't work. So our first job is always mobility and then waking up uh, reminding the conductor how to connect. So that's number two, mobility number one, waking up number two, and then finally strength and endurance. 
So uh, position first, um, and you probably don't have one of these at home, but this works really well. You're gonna take a tennis ball, a golf ball, a golf ball tends to be a little small, a lacrosse ball, a baseball, and we're just gonna start to massage in your glutes, sitting on a regular chair. If you don't have a ball, and I'm sure you don't have one handy, you can also get your fingers in there, but I find it takes a little bit more force than most fingers can produce. So we're gonna work on mobility first. Uh, you can also do this on the floor really nicely. And anytime I work on mobility, I usually try to do two things at once. And if you don't have a ball handy, and I'm sure you don't, you can at least do this part of the exercise, which is to give you a stretch at the same time you work on the massage. So those of you sitting in a chair or those of you standing, you can also do this standing, but we're gonna work on a figure four stretch and you can play with the position of your leg. A figure four stretch, your back should be nice and neutral, maybe even slightly extended. I'm gonna work on my tight glutes at the same time because I love to do massage and stretching at the same time. And I'm gonna sink myself into that stretch, not rounding my back, but making sure I stay nice and tall. I'm gonna shift my weight onto that ball and this works better with a lower chair. I'm actually gonna work my physical therapy table down here. There we go, because I want the benefits from this. Uh, get in a figure four stretch, start to roll around on that, get my back nice and neutral and nice and tall. Um, and then once you're here, you can start to sink into that stretch or sink into that ball or both. Maybe if you come back and you watch this video later, do this with the ball. I love my mobility exercises with massage tools that have three components to them. The first is you roll around. Everyone's really good at part one. You roll around. The second part of this exercise is you pause on something that you'd rather not pause on meaning you're looking for a tight spot. And you don't want to bump into the sciatic nerve, it goes back there. You don't want any numbness or tingling or we're shooting down the leg. And if you do, please stop this, please give us a call, we'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, so you roll around, that's part A. Part B is stop on something that feels tight. Uh, part B is the pause and relax and breathe into that. If you're doing the stretch part of this without the ball, just remember to keep good posture play with your knee angle to find a good stretch, make sure that you're tipping forward into that stretch. So part B with the massage is to stop, breathe, and relax. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Stop, breathe, and relax. And then part C, um, if part A was we were rolling the muscle, we were rolling the ball on the muscle, part B is stop. Part C is actually you're gonna move the muscle on the ball. And what I mean by that is you're gonna roll your knee up and down a little bit now I've got an active release going on. I'm actively using the muscle while I'm releasing the muscle. I'm actively using the muscle to move my leg in and out. Perfect. So I'm gonna come on off of that stretch. Uh, so there's a couple of things going on there. We have the stretch, we have the active mobility, and then we've got a massage. A lacrosse ball is probably my favorite tool. So that's number one, hip mobility for our, our tight butt syndromes. If you like that exercise, please engage, tell your friends about this, maybe click on the um, yay sign or the thumbs up sign. Um, and we always keep these videos on our website and on our YouTube site as, as well. Okay, number two, let's, um, now that we've got a little bit more mobility in that hip, yeah. Yeah, please. Oh, awesome. Uh, Carolyn has a question and wants to know about the same technique with the foam roller. Um, Karen, thanks so much for asking. I really like the foam roller. Uh, it's the place I always start people out when they're starting this exercise. Uh, it's a little bit less force per square inch. In other words, a little more gentle. I, and at the same time, I'll say that a lot of people, as they get more mobility back here, they find that um, it's a little, it's not deep enough. It's not specific enough. So the foam roller is a place I like to start and then progressing to something a little bit smaller or something a little bit harder. Thank you so much for your questions. So if part A is mobility, uh, part B is the wake up this muscle. And so the way you're gonna do that, I'm gonna turn this just a little bit toward, more toward me. Um, so part B is to wake up this muscle. And probably my favorite way to do this um, is to get up against the wall. I'm standing on the leg that I wanna wake up. My other leg that's close to the wall is bent up. And then I'm gonna start to tip forward. And as I tip forward, I'm going to make sure that my sit bone goes down and back, that I hinge at the hip, keeping a good posture and alignment here. So I'm hinging at the hip, my sit bone's going down, my femur's sinking deeper. 
Um, and then I'm going to drop this hip just a little bit as I bow down. And then once I'm there, I'm going to do a couple of things. The first is I'm going to lift up my hip toward the ceiling and drop it back down. Lift up the hip toward the ceiling and drop it back down. Assume I'm on a wall for the moment. I'm lifting up my hip and I'm dropping it down. Lifting up my hip and then I'm dropping it down. The second thing I'm going to do, again, assume I'm on a wall. The wall is on my right side. Um, I'm going to lift my torso a little bit and drop it back down. I'm gonna lift my torso a little bit. Now note, I'm not doing this. I am not extending my back. I am extending my hip. I'm lifting up from my hip. So the first motion is this kind of side, the side hip lift. The second motion is a hip extension. Now if anybody's doing this at home and starting to feel it in their glute like I am, say yes. Oh, okay, I gotta pause because that really did hit my butt nicely. So that exercise for me was one of the first exercises about a decade ago that really started to wake up my very lazy butt. And it's probably one of my favorite neuromuscular exercise, brain connection. So I'll review it one more time. Uh, hip down and back, lean up against the wall, a hip wag, number one, and a torso lift, number two. A torso lift is not a back arch. Make sure that your back is staying level. And probably one of my favorite things to do to make sure you're doing this right is to put a stick on your back to make sure that your back is staying in line with the stick as opposed to, oops, my balance, as opposed to arching away from the stick. So you don't, you don't want that. You want that. Not this, not that. You want to hinge out of the hip. So that takes us into our third and final exercise for the day. If you're just joining us, my name is Curtis Cramblett, physical therapist, and we're talking about how to wake up the butt today. Uh, number one, mobility. Number two, neuromuscular coordination. And number three, strength. So strength, um, it's a warm day out here now that I've woken up my glutes a little bit. Um, so strength, we're gonna take what you just did against the wall, and now we're gonna make it a little more functional into a backward lunge. Now notice, it wasn't this, this is more quad work. It was more taking my sit bone behind me and folding at this hinge. Backward lunge. Now, instead of going straight back, if this is 12 o'clock right in front of me, if this is 12 o'clock right in front of me, I'm going back into my left a little bit. So in other words, I'm going at about five o'clock, back into my left a little bit. If you're standing on your left leg, you'd be going back into the right a little bit. So a backward lunge and then back up. A backward lunge and then back up. I never come all the way up and I'm always neutral with my low back. So I do these backward lunges, assume the stick is there. I do these backward lunges for endurance, sets of 20 to 30. I do these backward lunges with weight in the opposite hand. I do these backward lunges with my foot on a box and I'm then dropping off of that box. Because remember, it's mobility number one. Number two, wake it up, get the brain connected. And then number three, if you don't have strength and endurance, no matter how good a form you have, no matter how much mobility you have, if you don't have strength and endurance, you're eventually gonna wear out. Your muscles are gonna get fatigued. And then you're not gonna be able to hold good fatigue. You're not gonna be able to hold good form. So those are the three exercises I'd like to leave you with. You'll find certainly more on our site about our glutes, more mobility exercises there as well. Um, make sure that I'm not forgetting anything here. Ah, oh, I think that's it. Um, Hey, and we're right on time, actually. So um, wake up your muscles, no matter whether we're talking about the, the hip right now. Uh, number one, get mobility in a joint. Without mobility, you, have a, you can't have good alignment. Number two, get the muscles to reconnect. Um, and then number three, getting, getting them strong. We're doing these regularly now. Um, yeah, we're doing them once a week on Tuesdays at this time. Please continue to join us uh, for these. Also, um, shelter in place continues. I just want to let everybody know that um, we're actually doing some home physical therapy appointments. So if you're not feeling like you can get out to physical therapy or like us, we're, we're pretty much shut down for physical therapy in face-to-face. Uh, -face. We're doing some home physical therapy where we, we bring the PT to you. Um, and uh, we have lots and lots of precautions to make sure that that's safe. So I want you to just take a moment, this last moment, to think about what you learned today uh, and what you're gonna do different, either on a piece of paper or mentally, or maybe writing it down. What did you learn today and what are you gonna do different? Are you gonna wake up that muscle before you get out and do your run? Uh, what, are you gonna, uh, what are you gonna take away? And I'd love to see that in the comments section below. It really helps us know, um, you know what people are taking away from this.
Um, for those of us, for those of you who know, know our work, uh, we really are grateful for you referring your friends as well. So if there's nothing else, um, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll see you here next week. Uh, if you want more from us, uh, you can get it on our newsletter or um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think that we're good. It is 2.50. Thanks all.